Welcome again to another episode on Kish TV. Today we will be talking about the effect of coronavirus or the impact the virus has made upon uh, has made on the economy. What impact it has caused on the economy. These are the things we'll be discussing on today's episode. Please make sure you stay tuned so you don't miss a thing on this lessons. <laughs> The coronavirus pandemic has tanked the global economy with unprecedented speed. Millions out of work, markets plunging, business slammed to a screeching halt. Here's what you need to know to understand this economic turmoil we're living in. have become the new normal during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thousands laid off or furloughed, stores shut down, public gatherings banned, travel restrictions and physical distancing imposed, as a third of the world practices some form of a lockdown to slow down the spread of COVID-19. And all of this is having an impact on our global economy. Industries like airlines, import-export companies, tourism, retailers, events, restaurants, and many other non-essential services have been hit, some harder than others. The United Nations says we may see a $2 trillion shortfall in our global income and a $220 billion hit to developing countries, excluding China, because of COVID-19. It's catastrophic. We've never seen anything like this. We have a huge portion of the economy uh, and people under lockdown, and that's going to have a huge impact on what can be produced and not produced. Many services have been able to go digital in an effort to continue running their business, such as e-learning, online fitness classes, food and grocery delivery services, and telecommunication apps. We're seeing this massive push that's going to result in all kinds of services being available remotely that previously weren't. And many companies have been able to adapt to working from home, a new pattern that seems to be forming as a part of our new reality. I think this is, is certainly going to be one of the long-term legacies of this, uh, of this crisis, is that people will work differently and will interact differently. The crisis is going to motivate uh, capability development and the energy and imperative to move to digital. But there are many industries that can't switch to a digital platform and continue functioning, such as hair salons, spas, events, movie theaters, and the tourism industry. 80% of the Canadian economy is services. And most of those services require some kind of a, a personal touch, not all, you know, kind of necessarily high touch, but, but uh, and those businesses are really just, just kind of getting slammed. So if they can't pivot to digital online fulfillment and purchase, then they're just, they're basically shut down. So if you're in that worst case scenario of can't transform my business model into digital, and if you're a, you know, non-staple type of purchase, and you have low financial resilience, access to cash and credit, uh, well, that's, that's where we're gonna see carnage first. But a particular industry that is experiencing both the positive and negative effects from COVID-19 is the oil industry. While the steep decline in gas prices isn't good for countries which rely on oil exports, it's a good thing for consumers and can be a benefit to the global economy. An oil price decline of this magnitude is typically a significant benefit for the uh, global economy in a uh, sort of synchronized downturn because yes, oil exporting countries have a lot less revenue, but they constitute a much smaller share of global consumers than, oil, uh, than the oil uh, importing countries do. Uh, and when you want a global recovery uh, to begin or strengthen, you really have to have the largest number of people uh, face a declining uh, price of an item that they always buy, namely oil. So overall, this is this is a, a benefit, uh, in my opinion, in the short run for uh, the global economy. It's only been a few weeks since parts of the world have essentially come to a halt. So figuring out how long this economic decline will last is a challenge. Very difficult to call anything that requires us to know things that we still don't know. I mean, even the experts, epidemiologists and virologists are still trying to figure this out. Health experts have said it could be months before we start seeing signs of change. And social distancing could continue for quite some time depending on how much the virus continues to spread. So in the meantime, there will continue to be a great deal of pressure placed on governments. It, it will be the role of the government, frankly, to ensure uh, income security for uh, people and to the extent uh, possible, also provide uh, the kind of mitigating factors uh, that allows companies to survive, even if they have no business, 
that, for instance, would mean subsidizing the wages of workers, facilitating that they can roll over loans, offering state guaranteed cheap loans and things like that. What we know at this point based on experts is that social and physical distancing as well as washing your hands helps slow down the spread of the novel coronavirus. yeah, hey guys, if today happens to be your first time watching this channel, make sure to hit the subscription button and give us a thumbs up. At the same time, leave a comment below in the comment section. The coronavirus pandemic isn't just raising the specter of recession. Economists are worried about the possibility of something even worse. If everybody stays home for six months, then, you know, it's hard to, it, it's going to be like the Great Depression. So what's the difference between a recession and a depression? It comes down to how long the economy contracts. A recession is typically defined as two negative quarters of economic growth and as part of the normal business cycle. The U.S. economy has fallen into recession more than 30 times since 1854. A depression is something vastly different. It happens when the economic decline is sustained and might potentially go on for years. Years. Now, that's only occurred once in American history in 1929, and it lasted 10 years. Because it lasts so long, a depression is more severe. A decade ago, unemployment hit 10% during the worst of the Great Recession. But during the Great Depression, the jobless rate peaked at nearly 25%. The reason economists are so worried this time, we just don't know how long we'll be fighting this virus. We don't know how long stores will be shut down, how long travel will be paused, how much damage will be done to supply chains or how many companies will go bankrupt. But there is hope if you look to history. The recession that followed the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic lasted just seven months. That's much shorter than the average recession. Let's hope this time history repeats. A record shattering 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment last week. That's on top of the 3.3 million who filed the week before. Joining us now, CNN Chief Business Correspondent Christine Roman, CNN Anchor and Correspondent Julia Chatterley, and CNN White House Correspondent John Harwood. Romans, once again, just the top line number, double what it was last week, I think higher than the worst we even expected for this week. Yeah, it really is a job shock here. And you've got 10 million layoffs or furloughs, that means, in just the past couple of weeks, 10 million. It's pointless for me even to make a chart of it for you, John, because it just looks like a geyser going straight up. Um, I'm actually even a little surprised that the state unemployment offices were able to handle this kind of volume. Last week, we know there were so many people filing for unemployment benefits, they weren't even in some cases able to get all of them. Another notable thing about these numbers from the Department of Labor, John, is that uh, the, the numbers doubled and it has spread from hospitality and restaurants into just about every corner of the economy, including uh, health care. The biggest Main Street bailout in history will soon work its way into your bank account, and there are important features for American workers and savers. First, that check, up to $1,200 for individuals, 
$2,400 for couples and $500 per child. This is a one-time payment that for most people will be direct deposited into your bank account if you file tax returns electronically with the government in 2018 and 2019. If you have to wait for a paper check, it could take a little longer. There are also better jobless benefits, an extra $600 a week for up to four months, and gig economy workers, the self-employed, are included for the first time. For retirees, required minimum distributions are waived for 2020. That means seniors don't have to take money out of their retirement accounts and take a loss. It gives your nest egg more time to recover if you don't need the money right now. For taxpayers in extreme distress, the CARES Act waives the 10% early withdrawal penalty on distributions from IRA, 401k, and certain retirement accounts and annuities. And if you already have a loan outstanding on your retirement plan and repayment is due this year, you can delay your repayment up to a year. For student loan borrowers, repayment and interest on all federally backed student loans has been suspended for six months until September 30th. And the Department of Education can't collect on defaulted loans by garnishing wages or tax returns. Stay at home. It's the mantra of the fight against coronavirus. But as job losses mount, more people are struggling to make payments on those homes. The federal government has taken some action. What does housing have to do with health? It has everything to do with health. Evictions and foreclosures are halted for those with federally backed mortgages. The $2 trillion stimulus package includes a 60-day suspension for housing and urban development properties and single-family mortgages insured by the Federal Housing Administration, as well as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. But that's only about 60% of all mortgages. For everyone else, it may come down to a patchwork of stopgap measures. Bank of America announced it would allow customers to defer mortgage payments for those who request it, but other major banks have not yet made such broad assurances. Kansas, California, Indiana, and several other states have suspended all foreclosures and evictions temporarily, while New York ordered a halt on all mortgage payments for the financially distressed for 90 days. And what about the 36% of Americans who rent? The stimulus package includes a direct payment to those who meet certain income requirements, up to $1,200 for individuals, $2,400 for couples, and $500 per child. But a one-time payment won't go very far. That's where the stimulus bill's expanded unemployment insurance comes in. Not only does this jobless insurance pay more and last longer, it also covers independent contractors, gig economy workers, and the self-employed. What we call unemployment insurance on steroids, it goes longer. That, that first uh, check is nice, but how are you going to pay the rent, pay, buy the food, and do things in the months after if you're still unemployed? The unemployment lasts for four years, and it's larger. Uh, it's more money because it pays you, for most workers, their full salaries. Landlords can seek relief if they have a federally backed loan, but also tenants cannot be evicted for non-payment for 120 days. This applies to some 27,000 properties financed through Freddie Mac. Remember, if you're behind on your rent or mortgage, contact your lender or landlord. Don't wait, work out a plan with them now. And of course, deferred payments mean you'll still have to pay them eventually while adding on a few months at the end of a 30-year mortgage may be a reasonable solution for renters required to pay back rent, that story could be very different. I'm worried about having a heart attack, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm concerned. The government needs to react and help us get through this. That's the only way it's gonna work. Small businesses have been ravaged by the coronavirus and the economic chaos it has caused. Now the government is ready to help. The stimulus package allocates almost $350 billion for forgivable small business loans. Who is eligible for those funds? Generally, any business with 500 employees or less. That includes independent contractors and sole proprietors. The loans are designed to keep businesses afloat. Businesses are eligible for two and a half months of payroll costs based on the average cost from last year. And the loans do not have to be paid back as long as owners meet a few conditions. The loan must be used within two months and cover payroll, mortgage interest, rent, and utility costs. The recipient can't lay off workers or reduce their pay. If a business has already let workers go, it can use the loan to hire them back. 75% of the money must go to payroll costs. To get the loan, there's a two-page application that can be filled out online. You can plug your zip code into the Small Business Administration website to find a lender in your area. The White House is promising to move quickly on these funds, 
but some banks say the details aren't quite worked out yet and that may cause delays. The money will be given out on a first come first serve basis, so visit treasury.gov to get more information and the application. Of course, some big questions remain. Will the funds be enough to keep small business on their feet? And what if the pandemic stretches well into the future? If that happens, the government may need a new package with more capital to help small businesses survive. The U.S. Federal Reserve is battling a coronavirus-fueled recession. It cut interest rates to near zero. And I want to congratulate the Federal Reserve. It's a big step, and I'm very happy they did it. Announced unlimited bond buying and injected more liquidity into financial markets. The Fed also says it will purchase commercial mortgage-backed securities. But what if it's not enough? There's some talk about the Fed even buying individual stocks. The central bank would likely need the law change to allow that. Negative interest rates are another possibility. Other global central banks have gone negative, and President Trump likes the idea. But Fed Chief Jerome Powell has pretty much ruled that out. We do not see negative policy rates as likely to be an appropriate policy response here in the United States. There are other unconventional tools the Fed could use. Section 13.3 of the Federal Reserve Act grants the central bank emergency powers. Experts argue that includes the authority to lend directly to companies hit by the economic shock of coronavirus. And the Fed says a Main Street lending program for small and medium-sized businesses is coming. Then there's perhaps the last resort, helicopter money. Picture a helicopter flying overhead, throwing cash down on everyone. Former Fed Chief Ben Bernanke famously talked about this in 2002. Under this scenario, the government makes money directly available to consumers to spend. But it doesn't pay for it by borrowing, which adds to the deficit. Instead, it's paid for by the Fed, which essentially prints money. It's a theoretical idea never done before, but if the Fed's actions up to now don't work, the governments around the world could move to grant central banks new powers. How quickly can the economy recover from coronavirus? A lot depends on what shape this recession takes. There's an alphabet soup of possibilities. The V-shape, the U-shape, or the dreaded L-shape. A V-shape is the best case scenario here. It's a sharp drop followed by an equally sharp recovery. It means the economy would ramp back up just as quickly as it shut down. But that will largely depend on how quickly the virus is contained and how soon people can go back to work. That's why a U-shaped recovery may be more likely here. In that case, the economy contracts, then bumps along the bottom for a while before climbing back. Many economists are betting on that scenario since uncertainty caused by the virus won't just evaporate overnight. Business owners and CEOs may curtail future investment and consumer spending, the biggest driver of U.S. economic activity, probably won't bounce back immediately either. That's partly because of lost income, but also because of the psychological toll the viral outbreak has taken on the consumer. Beyond the V and the U, there's the worst case scenario, the L shape. Picture a hockey stick with a long tail. That happens if the virus is not contained. Cookie sold.